In order to calculate value at risk in Excel, we need daily price data. And what I have here is two ETFs. One is SPY, so the S&P 500 uh, ETF. This is the largest S&P 500 ETF. This will make up the equity stock part of our portfolio. And then over here in column F, I've got the closing prices for BND, which is the Vanguard Total Bond Index ETF. And I've got price data, the closing prices for the whole previous year. And then from there in columns D and G, I just took the daily returns by taking the, you know, um, the next day's price and subtracting the previous day's price and dividing by the previous day's price. And I just did that for both of them. So now we need to give an expected return for the S&P 500 index, which if you look historically, it's been about 7%. So we'll just say 7%. And then we need to find standard deviation. So we'll use the inbuilt Excel formula, uh, standard dev.s. And we're just going to go back over here and we're going to grab all of the daily returns for the previous year. And this gives us the daily standard deviation of the returns for the S&P 500 index. But what we want is actually the annualized standard deviation. So we're just going to multiply this value by the number of trading days in a year, 252. Um, to the uh, exponent of 0.5, so we're taking the square root of 252. And that gives us the annual standard deviation. For the total bond market index, we can say 2% uh, is our expected return, probably a decent estimate. And then we're gonna do the same thing to find the standard deviation, so equal standard of S, and that the S just stands for sample. And we're gonna grab all of the returns in column G. And so I'm just doing control shift down on my keyboard to do that automatically. And then again, we're just going to multiply by the square root of 252 to get the annualized standard deviation. So there we go. And now we want to find the covariance of the S&P 500 index and the total bond market. So we'll use an inbuilt Excel formula for this as well. So equals covariance dot S. And then we're going to grab the array from column D. And then, so comma, and then we'll grab the array from column G as well. And then we're going to multiply. So, so if we just leave it at that, that's our covariance of the daily returns. But we want to multiply it by 252 to get our covariance of the, uh, the annual covariance of the returns. Okay, so now we need to say what our portfolio value is. So let's just say $100,000. And let's give a weight to the S&P 500 index. So we'll say 60% of our portfolio is in the stock market. And then um, one minus 60% one minus will be in the bond market, which is 40%. Now we need to calculate portfolio variance, which for a two asset portfolio, this is the formula for how to calculate the um, portfolio variance. So we'll do equals the weight of one squared times um, the the uh, standard deviation of that one. Oh, this will be one squared. Oh, sorry, this should be here. And then we'll add the weight of two squared multiplied by standard deviation squared. And so um, the standard deviation squared is just the variance. And then we'll do two times the weight of one times the weight of two times the covariance, which we calculated over here. And that gives us the portfolio standard or the portfolio variance. To get to the portfolio standard deviation, we just need to take the square root of portfolio variance, which we can just put it to the exponent 0.5 to do that. And so this gives us our portfolio standard deviation. And finally, we can calculate value at risk, which is the potential loss given a specified time interval, which we'll use days, and a specified confidence interval. So let's go ahead and try to find out what is our VAR for ten, a 10-day period. Well, in order to find that, we need to find the expected return on our portfolio for that 10-day period, which will just be equal to um, 10 divided by 252. So this gives us the percentage of the year that's passing multiplied by the total portfolio value. And then we have to find what is our expected annual return. So we can do that by just taking the expected return of each asset and multiplying it by the weight of that asset. So we're going to do that for both assets. 
And then that gives us an expected return over the 10 day period of $198 on our $100,000 portfolio. Let's use a confidence interval of, let's say 0.95 or uh, yeah, a 95% confidence interval. So we wanna find what's at our 5% tail risk. Um, we need to find the Z score in order to do that. So we'll say equals norm.s.inv and select the confidence interval value that gives us the Z score. Okay, and then to calculate VAR, I put I listed out the formula for it right here. So we'll say e equals the expected return, which we calculated here. And then we'll subtract what that downside risk is, which is the portfolio value multiplied by the standard deviation of the whole portfolio, multiplied by that Z score. And then finally, we'll multiply by the number of days divided by 252, again, finding the percentage of the year. But this time, because it's a standard deviation, we have to take the square root of it. So we'll put the exponent 0.5, and then that gives us a value at risk of $2,864. So that's the potential loss. But what happens if we expand our time interval? So instead of 10 days, let's say we do 50 days. Well, you're gonna see that value of risk value increase because there's a longer time period for uh, things to go bad essentially. And then what happens if we decrease our t uh, confidence interval? So this would basically take us from further out in the tail into more near the center of the distribution. So this should um, actually decrease value at risk, right? So now it's only $4,344. But then what happens if we go out to the 99% confidence interval? That should increase our potential loss to $8,694. All right, if you enjoyed this video, I've got two more coming, or that might be out right now when you're watching this. One's on the historical method for calculating VAR, and one is on the Monte Carlo simulation method for calculating VAR. Uh, feel free to download the file automatically uh, in the, with the link in the description. And I hope to see you on the next videos. Thank you for watching.